The Soul Redeemer Book 3, Chapter 33, Triangle Park The Lord had mercy on Nicole and allowed them to sleep once they reached the ranch. But very early the next morning, Jake woke her up. After they had eaten a breakfast of eggs and toast, Nicole looked around her home, wondering when she would see it again. They thanked God for his protection and provisions and asked for his direction and guidance. As they grabbed their packs, Jake declared that they were to take the truck, and he winked at Nicole as he threw the keys to Robert. You drive, my friend, he said. Nicole glanced up at the sky ship. It was really weird, but every time she thought of the sky ship, she felt as if it had a million eyes that were searching to and fro, looking for her. She silently prayed again that the blood of Jesus would continue to cover them and hide them from the eyes of the enemy. Once they were on the road, Jake began studying the old AAA highway maps, looking for any clue of where to find Triangle Park. They were heading south toward Los Angeles, but Jake had looked at every map of the southwestern states with no results. From the back seat, Nicole scooted up and looked over Jake's shoulder. Could it be that Triangle Park is not a name, but a shape? Good idea. I hadn't thought of that, he agreed. They both studied the map, and Jake suddenly exclaimed, Here's a state park just south of the greater Los Angeles area, and it's shaped like a triangle. Let's start there and see what we find. Four hours later, the four friends exited the truck in a place they assumed was Triangle Park. By all appearances, the park was a beautiful, peaceful place with lots of trees, green grass, bushes, and ferns. They began to walk the perimeter of the triangle praying. About three-quarters of the way through, they came upon a group of people having a picnic. One young woman was separated from the group, leaning against a tree looking visibly shaken. No one from her party seemed to notice her. Nicole walked right up to her while the others stayed behind and asked, Are you okay? The woman said, I, I, I don't know. I just found something that terrifies me and it makes me feel sick to my stomach. I, I don't know what to do about it. Nicole gently touched the woman's arm. I'm sorry you had to experience that, but my friends and I are here to help. Would you mind showing us what you found? She looked at Nicole as if seeing her for the first time, and Nicole smiled at her. It will be okay. I'm Nicole, by the way. I'm D. she looked over towards Jake. Nicole said, that's my husband Jake and our friends, Robert and Risa. They came closer and greeted her. Will you take us to what you found, Nicole pressed. Okay, Dee said, but I won't go near it. That's fine. You can just point it out. Thank you so much, Nicole said as she took Dee's arm and walked with her towards the center of the park. Dee stopped and pointed to an old wooden shack that looked like it hadn't been used in years. There's a trap door under that black doormat, she said, pointing toward the front door. I, I didn't go inside, but I feel things, bad things, coming from it. She hugged herself and shivered. I want to go back now. I'll walk her back, Risa offered. Thank you, Nicole said. Then to Dee, she said, you have been a big help. You may not know this, but you're an answer to our prayer, and we thank God for you. At the mention of God, Dee looked even more fearful and glanced toward the sky as if expecting to be terminated. It's okay, Nicole said. We are servants of the Most High God, and He is protecting us right now. He wants you to know that if you will call upon the name of the Lord and choose to trust in Him, then His Son Jesus will save you and heal you. He will remove the power of fear from your life and will empower you to live for Him in victory. Can I pray for you? she asked. Dee nodded. Yes, but not here, not now. Okay, Nicole agreed. Then she hugged the young lady. Thank you again. When Risa and Dee were out of sight, Nicole saw that Jake and Robert had already opened the trap door and were descending into the dugout. She felt torn, wondering if she should join them, when Jake hurried back out and ran to the bushes, retching. Oh, Jake, I'm so sorry, she tried to comfort him as she patted his back. He stood up, his face white as a sheet. It's bad, really bad. Dead bodies, obviously physically and sexually tortured. 
Risa had come back and was helping Robert up the steps. He had something in his arms. Nicole ran to him. He was holding a naked little girl, maybe four or five years old, with dried blood covering slash marks on her neck, arms, legs, and body. Duct tape was stretched over her mouth and around her head. Her eyes were closed, and she was completely limp. Robert said, She's alive, although barely. The rest are dead. Risa looked around. We must go now. There is nothing left for us to do here at this time, she said as she removed her light jacket and placed it over the girl. Jake just looked at the girl with a blank expression. He was still in shock, having never experienced anything like that before. With indescribable pain in her heart and tears in her eyes, Nicole closed the trap door and put the mat back in place over it. Jesus! Jesus, take these precious little ones into your arms of love and please shut this place of torture and death down. Nicole, come, Risa commanded. She was already leading Jake back towards the truck while Robert carried the girl. She ran to catch up. Risa helped Jake onto the front passenger seat and climbed in back behind him. Once Nicole was situated, Robert placed the girl on her lap and jumped in the driver's seat. He threw a pocket knife to Risa. Now would be a good time to pray that our truck will be cloaked, Robert said as he drove out of the park and onto the highway heading back towards Samaria. We have just interfered with the enemy's plans. Risa prayed and then carefully began removing the duct tape from the girl's mouth. The little girl opened her eyes and looked into the kindest face she had ever seen. She faintly smiled at Risa seizing Reese's heart and touching her in a way she had never before experienced. And for the second time in her life, Risa wiped away a stray tear. Nicole urged the girl to drink a sip of water, and then she closed her eyes again and fell into a peaceful sleep. As she gently stroked the matted hair of the little girl, Nicole cried tears of sadness for all the pain this precious one had suffered. She cried out in anger at those who had caused it. She cried out in joy for the shepherd who had rescued this one little lost lamb. Jake leaned his head back, took a deep breath, and said, We did it. We really did it. We are really going to do this. And then he fell asleep.